Hey, Johnny, you saved the day. And I want to thank you for not shooting out all my windows. Now that the shooting stopped, folks is trickling back. Mayor's fit to be tied. They say he spent the family fortune on the old pyrite mine. And it was a wash. <laughs> Ms. McIntosh, she was screaming like a stuck pig about the family's ruin. I'd say the cause was that bloodstone feller. I don't know what came of him. Probably skedaddled back east. If you didn't ask me, he should stay there. Buck, we did it. Got the kid and now <whistles> you is a rich man. I just came to say adios, Buck. Laurel's holding the asbestos preacher at gunpoint. She's waiting on me. We's uniting for better or for worse. So goodbye, Buck. Take care of yourself. You may not be the smartest dog I ever met, but then again, brains twart everything. Goodbye, Buck. Plug your trap, Jones. Sheriff? I don't enjoy conversating, so I'll make this short. I'm a ranching man, and now that Red's ready to raise up a brood of youngins, I'm gonna need help with my spread. What do you say about becoming a 50-50 partner in the double speed? I wonder if you'd care to, um, entertain a highly profitable business opportunity. It's surefire, can't miss. Think of it. Lead. It's the material of tomorrow. We'll put it in paint. Oh, Papa, our sheriff doesn't want to invest. He wants to spend. Sheriff, don't stay in Diamondback. Leave it with me. You have performed both bravely and well, and you have been rewarded. But there are people still who hurt, who can be helped by your wealth. Would you give up your riches? It's your choice. Make it carefully. <laughs> all right then, Johnny. What are you going to do with all this here silver? You won't regret it. Ranching's good living, Sheriff. Best in the world. Now let's go tell Red the good news. Well, the stranger did what he said he'd do. He turned in his badge and formed a partnership with Nate Trotter. Smart move, we said. The double speed prospered and our stranger built himself a small cabin in the shadow of the Uni Mesa. Ruby had given up her afternoon swims in the water tower, raised kids. They grew tall while she and Nate grew even more honorary. Fourteen years to the day he confronted Bloodstone, the stranger disappeared. No note, no word, no explanation was ever found. Nate traced his footsteps, however. They led him to the foot of the mesa before vanishing into the dust. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta see a man about a horse. A wise decision, Sheriff. Now, let's cart this stuff over to the bank. I anyone know where I can find a smelter? Well, the stranger did what he said he'd do. He stayed on as Sheriff and went into the lead business with Mayor McIntosh. Marie, of course, was all over the stranger like a fly on... Excuse me. She wooed him hard. But the stranger wanted nothing to do with her. Marie eventually ran away to Seattle, where her grandson would found a well-known software empire. The mayor, well, he wasn't that shrewd. The lead business failed and the stranger's money was all lost. When the bubble burst, so did the mayor's arteries. Even the stranger left to look after Mrs. McIntosh. 
She lived to be 109. We were never a sympathizing bunch, but boy, did Diamondback feel sorry for the stranger. <laughs> Sheriff, I'll make you the happiest man on earth. Let's leave this town tonight. Well, the stranger did what he said he'd do. Turned in his badge and married Marie. Then, after swearing the mayor's debts, the couple traveled the world. Though they never did visit Boston, that would have pleased Mrs. McIntosh. Instead, they moved to the Argentine, where they built a mansion in Buenos Aires, along the Rio de la Plata. Plata being Spanish, of course, for silver. But the stranger soon tired of Marie's endless gushing over fancy gowns and even fancier Argentines. And one day she awoke to find him gone. No note, no word, no explanation was ever found. Though Leroy claimed he'd seen him once after that, atop the Uni Mesa. Leroy said the stranger looked as if he were asking for forgiveness. Now, if you'll excuse me. Thank you, stranger, and your people thank you for your gift to them. Well, the stranger did what he said he'd do. He left the silver for Sonoma. All of it didn't take a peso. Sonoma, she used it to help her people. Being smart as a whip, she didn't buy them guns or dynamite or anything like that. Instead, she bought them a good lawyer and an army of lobbyists. And before you could say pressure group, she had convinced the powers that be in Washington to give the Uni their land back with a large concession to boot, namely funding for their very own school. The Uni went back home, and there, despite depressions, wars, poverty, and a casino boom, they've kept the story of the stranger and what he did for his people close to their hearts. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta see a man about a horse. Remember us, will you, Johnny? Diamondback ain't gonna be forgetting you. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.